Grace and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we begin our time of worship, I want to remind you of a few things. Next Sunday is a fifth Sunday, and so it's an opportunity for us to gather with the other churches on our charge uh, in worship. Um, we may have some others joining us for 11 o'clock worship, but certainly they will join us after worship for a box lunch meal. We hope that you can plan to come and stay and enjoy a meal and fellowship together. Also, right after the service today, uh, we have some young people who are going to train as acolytes. So stay for some lunch and a time of training. This day is the Lord's Day, and God has already come, prepared the way for us to be together, to worship, to fellowship, and to meet God. So I invite you, as you're able, to stand together as we join together in the call to worship. Though storms rage about me, I will clothe myself with the whole armor of God. I will fasten the belt of truth about my waist. I will place strength and determination as my shoes to aid me in my ministry and mission for God. I will take up the shield of faith with which I shall defend against evil ways. I will pray diligently at all times, offering prayers and supplication to God. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit will accompany me on my journey. Be strong in the Lord who provides for your every need. I place my confidence and trust in God always. Amen. Please remain standing for the affirmation of faith, which is found in your bulletin and also on page 881 in the hymn book. I believe 
God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who has conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand. forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last one. The lesson this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. You may find it in your pew Bible on page 929. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate when they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason... I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And if you have your backpack, you can bring it with you. Good morning, everybody. How are you all feeling about school starting? Yay. Thumbs up, middle, thumbs down. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of feelings about school, and school makes you sick. <laughs> but it can also be fun. Yeah. Oh, look at those book bags. When we start something new like school, it always brings big feelings. Sometimes we're really excited, sometimes we're nervous, and sometimes it mixes all together so that um, we, we don't know how to feel, but that's okay. Um, 
when you wear your backpack, usually you take it with you every day to, to take your books to school and to take your homework home so that you can study and learn more. So your, your backpack is with you wherever you go for school. And that's a reminder that God is with us wherever we go. As we start a new year in school, Miss Emily has some um, tags for us for your book bag. You take one and pass it down. There's one for you. That's one for you. You want one? David, do you want a tag? <laughs> These tags say, be loved, be kind, be you. These are tags that we want you to have. You can put on your book bag or on your keys or something that you keep with you to remind you wherever you go, God is with you and your church loves you and is praying for you. So for each of you for this school year, we pray you may be curious and kind, gentle and strong, brave and loving. And now I want to pray for each of you and for all the teachers, administrators, school workers out there who do anything with kids. And this is a blessing, so um, when we receive a blessing, we can hold our hands out as a gesture of being open and receive what God is doing for us. So I invite you to hold your hands open as we pray. Let's pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves, our big feelings, and our backpacks to you. Last year was different from what we expected. We couldn't see our friends or play on playgrounds. We learned at home in mass six feet apart or both. In all these changes, we may have felt sad and alone. God, our friend who comforts us, hold us close and wipe our tears. In our backpacks, we carry blank pages, sharpened pencils, and pointy crayons. In our hearts, we carry big feelings, unanswered questions, and hopeful expectations. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, who we might meet, and who we might become. God, our friend who is always with us, be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride the bus. Be with us as we walk. Be with us as we buckle seatbelts, zip up jackets, and tie shoes. However we get there and whatever we wear, bless this journey into something new. For the grown-ups going back to school, with us, God, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders, and all they do to help us learn and grow. God, our friend who's full of wonder, fill their hearts and bless their hands. Amen. Your church loves you, and we're praying for a wonderful school year for us, for you. So put these tags on your book bags and be reminded of that wherever you go.
Please be seated. Our New Testament lesson comes to us from Ephesians in the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20. Listen with me for God's word to us. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that your spirit surround us in our hearing in our speaking, in our listening, that we may put on the gospel armor and be about your work in the world. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The book of Ephesians is filled with beautiful language of prayer and praise, doxology to God, lifting us up, turning our eyes upward to God that rules above all. But even as it turns us toward virtue and value and above all praise of God, it does not deny that this world we are rooted in is corrupted, corruptible. It doesn't ignore that sometimes life is just awful. We've been dealing with a lot of that lately. Big, big things. COVID rearing its head in an ugly way again. Natural disasters all across the world. The horrors this week in Afghanistan. And close by, those we love struggling. Something as hard as a parent losing a child. In response, we're invited to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. That makes me think of when I was a kid and playing dress-up. Do you remember those days, too? If you put on a cape, well, you were Superman or Superwoman. If you stood in front of a chalkboard, you, you were a teacher. If you put on a hard hat, you were ready to build a building. When we change our clothes, we can change our sense of self. And it can change our way of being in the world. So as you put on your clothes, what do they say about you? How, how do your clothes protect you in the world? And how does your clothing communicate who you are to those that you meet? I know those who are starting school tomorrow or who have already started have likely already picked out their first day's outfit. I'm sure you did this too when you started your first day of school. There's a sense in which there's a new thing happening. And so if you can put on the right garments, you can show your colleagues and your other students just who you are and just how you expect the year to be. A lot of pressure for one set of clothes. You know, there are some days in my life where I haven't felt too great just felt a little under the weather, a little lagging, and I've decided rather to put, rather than putting on 
uh, sweatpants and sweatshirt to put on something a little more professional looking even to go to school. Because sometimes the clothes we wear can give us energy, can give us a sense of purpose, can change our outlook on the day. Of course, we would be lying to ourselves if we're sick and we don't put on sweatpants when we need to stay home. Something that's soft and cozy and comfortable that will allow us to rest. Kevin and I have gone to Planet Fitness throughout the years, and they have a very simple dress code. No jeans, no open-toed shoes, no clothing that might intimidate others. So I could leave here after a full day's of work, after preaching my sermon, and go on the treadmill with my high heels and my dress. But form fits function with clothes. We need to wear something that equips us for our day. There's no better place to see this than uniforms. If we see somebody in a UPS uniform, we know this is somebody entrusted to bring us the goods that we ordered. If somebody drives up in a roofing truck and they get out with the logo on their shirt, we know there's somebody that's trusted to do the work before us. Same when we see someone in a police uniform a firefighter's outfit, and a military uniform. The image here that Ephesians gives us for the gospel armor is that of armor, the armor of a centurion, a Roman soldier. But people who dress like this are ones who put Jesus to death, and they're ones who squashed a Jewish revolution after his death. The clothes imaged here are clothes of war. They're clothes of empire, of conquest. A symbol for those who put Jesus to death and who crush resistance. These are fighting clothes that we see. But what Ephesians does is takes that image of war and flips it on its head. Instead, we're invited to put on armor for the gospel of peace. It's for the work of peace, not for war. In baptism, we're invited to put on Christ, to put on our new humanity. There's a baptismal tradition in the ancient church where those who were being baptized actually disrobed and went into the waters, and when they emerged brand new, washed clean, they were given a white garment of clothing to wear, something new and shiny that would remind them they were washed clean. A new humanity. Baptism equips us for the struggle in the time remaining. Not only are we washed clean and put on Christ, we, we get additional clothing for the struggle. We get the armor of God. This armor, though, is not for human conflict, but it's for conflict against the very forces of violence and death. It's a conflict as old as sin. I'm struck at the timing of this passage in Ephesians with this week. This Ephesians passage was set for us by the lectionary many decades ago, but, but this week, this week, U.S. forces withdrew from Afghanistan, having been there for two decades. And I think across our very politically divided United States, we all feel a collective sense of heartbreak for our troops, for a nation we've invested in, for potential lost, for women and children, for aid workers and Christian missionaries who were there long before this war began and who will stay in the dangerous future ahead. Soldiers are ones who know the true cost of war and I think long for peace in the deepest possible way. Ephesians has no confidence in the ordinary weapons of war, but there is confidence in God. You and I are invited to join the cause of God, 
to resist the resistance to God's powers and powers, rulers, authorities, big cosmic battle level, but also in the line between good and evil that runs through every human heart. So what do we receive for this great cosmic conflict? Well, first we receive a belt. A belt is given to soldiers to cinch in loose garments, to hold them tight to our body and to allow for quick movement. The belt that we Christians are given is truth, truthfulness, loyalty to the cause of God and to God. And we also receive a breastplate. Breastplates were usually leather or metal, something covering the front and, and sometimes the back as well. But this gift of a breastplate is not our own righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ given to us, that of the Messiah who defends the poor and the meek. In the book of Isaiah, if you want to look it up, in chapter 11 and in chapter 59, we reread about the armor of God that's fitted on the Messiah. Isaiah 59, verse 17, talks about God's armor and righteousness, and also mentions some garments of vengeance and fury. Garments of vengeance and fury. It's notable here that Ephesians doesn't give us these garments. Those garments are not part of the Christian's equipment, but not to be put on. Those things are left for God. In our struggle, we're also equipped with a shield, a helmet, and a sword. We receive the helmet of salvation. It's the promise of God's good future, already ours in hope while we struggle and wait for it. We also receive a sword of the word of God. Sometimes people take scripture and they wield it like a weapon, sometimes even pulling out single verses out of context and throwing them around like a sword to cut one another. But the reality we receive in the word of God is far greater. Not only do we receive the beauty of scripture and its testimony, but we are connected to the very word of God itself. The Spirit connects us to the word of God that said, let there be light, and there was. To the powerful and creative forces of God. The one that called Jesus forth from the tomb. The word of salvation that God promises does not return void. That fulfills its purpose. It makes the peace that's proclaimed. And we receive a shield, one which can quench all the flaming arrows of the forces of evil and death. Shields of that era could be many different sizes. They could be very, very small to all the way to full body size, made of wood stretched with leather on the front. But you could take the sword you could take the shield and dip it in water and saturate it in water so that even if you were walking into the enemy's forces that were firing arrows of fire at you, when it hit that shield, the water in it would put them all out. We're invited to put on all of the armor of God to stand firm. And if we're going to stand firm, we, we also need shoes. Soldiers know they better pay attention to their shoes. Shoes are the ultimate preparation for battle. If, if your shoes are not right, you will be crippled from the start. When I started teaching high school many years ago, I wore shoes that I had worn for many other occasions. Worn walking around, worn for all sorts of other tasks, but when I wore those shoes for teaching where I was standing most of the day, oh, I was almost crippled by the end of the week. Every single joint in my body ached from my ankles all the way up to my back. They, they were being put on the wrong foundation for what I needed to do. 
So after that very first week, that weekend, I went and I found dance goes that nurses wear to walk around every day, and I had the right foundation to support me in my work. The shoes provided for Christians provide a firm footing for the gospel of peace. And I love the way Ephesians says it. It says, put on whatever shoes make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Then you will have firm footing, ready to do whatever makes for peace, ready to speak and perform the gospel of peace. The image to me is of each of us coming to the spirit and, and getting fitted for our orthotics. Our shoes are measured, taken care of, and we are given exactly what we need as individuals to proclaim the gospel of peace. I invite you now to close your eyes. You don't have to, but it'll help you to visualize this gospel armor. Visualize yourself standing, and then fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Cinch it up so that your clothes are tight and you're ready to move. Feel the breastplate of righteousness slip on over your shoulders and feel its weight on them. Now feel the comforting weight of the helmet of salvation placed upon your head. It's holding you in tight, giving you focus. And now slide on your shoes, lace them up tight, snap on the Velcro, and make sure your socks aren't sliding down. And now put out your dominant hand and receive the sword of the Spirit. And over your other arm, feel the straps of the shield slide over your arm. It's heavy, you know, because it's been soaked in the waters of baptism so that those flaming arrows might be put out. You can open your eyes now. I don't know what battles are in front of you in your life right now. Whether it's starting school tomorrow, entering a new phase of life without a loved one, a loved one battling addiction, or who seems far from the faith. Whatever it is, I know it's a dangerous world out there, and it's one we can only navigate with prayer and this armor of God. But remember, brothers and sisters, we have already died with Christ in those waters of baptism. We have died our death already, so our struggle now is not to simply save our life. This armor is, is disarming. The decisive battle has already been fought and won when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And so, the forces of doom and death can never have the last word. So whatever battles are in front of you this day, they're little in the cosmic scheme of things, even though you may feel surrounded. Those battles we can now face with courage and confidence, knowing Christ has already won. You've been equipped with the gospel armor. You've been washed in the waters of baptism. And so as we face the battles in front of us, I want to ask you again the questions of baptism. If you'd like to look at them, you can. They're on page 34 of your hymnal. But I'll read them out to you. And I'm really asking you this. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, you will say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, you will say, I do. Do you confess Jesus as your Savior, Put your whole trust in his grace 
and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, you will say, I do. May it be so, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we turn to prayer, as we are invited to by Ephesians for all the saints, we ask that you pray for Elwood Green, for his daughter Kelly Green Petrel, for Benji Brasington, who is on the way to the hospital this morning, still continuing to battle with some pain, for the family of Rob Stewart, including his mom, Sandy Bruni, and his family, Leslie, and his sons, Gavin and Lachlan. Um, Rob died last week, and so we pray for Sandy and for all his loved ones in this fresh grief. And we also ask for you to pray for Lib Huntley, who is battling COVID at the Wadesboro Atrium. Let us pray. Steady and comforting God, with you every transition and new start is a reminder of your goodness, for you are always creating fresh, amazing things in and through us. After all we faced, overcome, and released this past year, we come to this year changed with new levels of gratitude, hope, and connection carved in us. Whether we are beginning our first year of school this year or graduated many years ago, we pray for this new year of learning. We pray as and for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope and grief. We give you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady hearts and deepening resilience. We pray for our minds that they will expand in wonder and celebration learning not just from the books studied, but people beside us. Open our minds with a willingness to be changed in unexpected ways and settle our thought loops in peaceful places. Lord, we pray for our hands, that they will reach out to help welcome and care. Bless our hands with patience and dedication as they grip pencils and type on keyboards. Swish paint brushes and clap in song Grip monkey bars and lunchbox handles, spin wheelchair tires and basketballs. We pray for our mouths, that they will speak words bringing life and connection. Help us use our mouths to honor the dignity and belovedness of all. Remind us to open our mouths for deep belly breaths when we're feeling anxious or afraid. We pray for our feet, that they will move toward those different from us and help others in safe ways. Plant our feet next to those who feel alone and bless our steps down hallways and sidewalks. We know that you are with us wherever our feet go or stay. We pray for our eyes, that they may see ourselves and others with compassion. Point our eyes toward those who are forgotten or struggling. Grow us in flexibility to see from all kinds of angles. Bless what and how we see, whether we're looking at a screen, a whiteboard, or the beauty of a person's face. And help us see with the most important eyes, the eyes of the Spirit within us. We say a special prayer for parents, as at the start of a new school year is always another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love as they entrust their children and trust in you. When questions remain unanswered and the realm of control is finite, bless them with peace and the promise you are right there with their child, whether heading to preschool or driving to college. We pray now also for teachers, staff, and administrators. Bless these faithful servants with courage and confidence knowing you are in their classroom with a steady hand on their shoulder. Give them peace, patience, and balance in the pressures they face, 
and a bravery to build structures and systems which justly serve all your children. Give them delight in the young ones before them and recognition of the sweet ways children are also teachers. Lord, we pray for all, for health and wholeness, fun and growth, surprise and amazement for this year ahead, knowing you will hold us all the way through. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, who continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our Lord has given us everything we need for life and health, and to face the struggles ahead. And so you're invited to return your tithes and offerings in praise to God. Lord, you have given us everything we need for life and health and success. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless each gift and every giver, that you would lend us confidence in the gospel armor so that we may show forth your truth to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Emily has extra tags if you want to grab one and give it to your grandkid or to a neighbor kid down the street. Anyone you want to know that we're thinking of them and praying for them in the new school year. Um, and the acolyte training will be in the education uh, room down the hall. Brothers and sisters, in baptism you have already died with Christ and risen to new life. So now, put on the armor of God. Your belt, your breastplate, your helmet, your sword, shield, and your shoes. Be ready to proclaim the gospel of peace in the face of whatever battle is before you. In the name of Christ, go in peace. Amen. Thank you.